Facebook. Good morning, Rhythmia Facebook. Uh, my name is Jerry, coming from Rhythmia in Guanacaste, Costa Rica, and it is a beauty today. It rained last night. It is so green. It's like we're in a jungle. Uh, what is Rhythmia? Rhythmia is a life advancement center uh, that is, is getting very famous for doing a particular thing called a soul merger. Uh, we use plant medicine, um, in this case, ayahuasca, and workshops and breath work and meditation, uh, yoga, farm to table organic food, and, and put it into and put it into this beautiful week of uh, of reconnecting with yourself. And we're super, super, super good at it. We're very good at it. How good? Ninety five point seven one percent of the people who come here, and we're working on our ten thousandth guest very soon. A new announcement: ten thousand people. 957 out of every thousand say they had a life-changing miracle during their stay, and that miracle resembled this merger, this soul merger. Uh -huh. Better than that, 92.70, that's 927 out of every thousand, six months later, report that this was the week that changed their life, changed their life. Uh huh. So we're doing something, and we're doing something really, really big. Because of that, we get great guests, Great guest speakers. We get celebrities, athletes, entertainers, uh, actors, like just the name of scientists. Uh, this week we have an, an astronaut here, which is crazy. A guy that's traveled 70 million miles in space. Like amazing. Ron Garin, uh, amazing, amazing, amazing astronaut. Was up in the space station for a half a year. Crazy stuff. Uh huh. And, and he's teaching this week. He has been here before and uh, had an amazing experience here, uh, of course. Last week, we had Bobby Brown. We had his wife, Alicia. We had uh, Cassie, the recording ar artist, Nefertiti, the actress. Like, all in one week was a beautiful week. We made we made such, such history this week. You're going to see as, as time goes on forward how that all plays out, but it was beautiful. Uh-huh. This thing is called life engineering, this, this particular uh, uh, Facebook Live. And what I talked about so far are a couple of different things. I spoke about, about the purpose of tithing and, and the effects of tithing in our lives. And I don't mean tithing to a, a church, although it may be that. I don't mean tithing. I mean tithing in life. Uh -huh. and, and the effect of it, the, the effect of progressive prayer uh, thanking for things that haven't happened and, and putting these two things together. And as they are together, they have a tremendous effect on what we call manifestation in general. So when we're doing manifestation, these two things are ever present. One thing that came out of this is that I had a lot of people who said, because I talk about, I talk about consistency and discipline, like the two, the two, uh, key factors and making these things that we're manifesting appear in our lives. Uh-huh. And 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 so uh discipline and consistency. And there are two things that a lot of people have a lot of questions over because I got a lot of questions about how do you stay disciplined or how do you stay consistent? Uh -huh. And I want to talk about this. That is a decision. So so being disciplined. Now, I'm not going to go before that and, and talk about where to pick from yet as a, resu as a result of the merger. I'm just going to talk about our agreements with ourselves, staying consistent and staying disciplined. The first thing we should learn uh -huh, is that, that the most important agreements we ever make are agreements with ourselves. If we cannot keep an agreement with ourselves, there's no way I can keep an agreement with someone else. So follow this. If I can't make an agreement with myself to get up and get out of bed, how can I ever make an agreement to be at some, someone's place at a particular time? The first thing that comes first is our agreements with ourselves. So, it, it, so the, the first part of consistency and discipline is knowing that time is going to pass anyway. I know that I'm on this 10-year plan and I know 10 years is coming uh, whether I do this or I don't do this. 10 years will show up. Just like next year will show up, tomorrow will show up, next week will show up. These times are coming, and I will be present in those times, uh huh. Unless I give up the body, and that's the assumption is is that I'm not going to give up the body in this in this period, right? So if that's coming, I have to make a decision with myself. 
So, so to make that decision, to make that commitment to myself, I have to say that every day I'm going to do this, this, and this, whether that's, whether that's, uh, uh, prayer, whether that's, uh, a gratitude prayer, wh whether that's making a tithe agreement, whatever that is, it's an agreement with myself. I need that agreement with myself so that I can have discipline. In other words, I have to be more worried about breaking that agreement with myself than I have about the uncomfortableness of carrying it through. I have to be more worried about breaking that agreement with myself, about dishonoring myself, than I am about the uncomfortableness of getting out of bed, of going to the gym, of, of saying my prayers, of, of doing my practice, of doing my breath work, whatever my thing is. Uh -huh. I have to be more afraid of breaking that agreement with myself. And once you get in the mind frame of that relationship with ourself, then it's much, much, much easier to take to stay disciplined, to stay on track, and to stay consistent. See, doing something once or twice has no value. It's it's that you have to do it every day. And in my thank in my gratitude prayers, I thank myself for maintaining my diet and my program. So that's my daily practice and my diet. I thank myself every day for its maintenance. Uh huh because it is the cornerstone of everything else that I do. You know, getting up, praying, working out, and keeping my diet are the cornerstone of my whole existence. It's, it's, it's my whole existence. So if we flip our mind and make a decision and honor that decision with ourself, honor that decision, say, I don't care. Uh, let's say you're still going out. You know, the, some of us are not 58 years old, some of us are 28 years old or 18 years old or whatever, and we're going out at night and say, if part of this is, if part of this is my decision to uh, honor myself by giving a gratitude prayer, uh -huh, to, to work out and to keep my diet, well, whether I'm going, you make a deal with yourself that says, I don't care if I'm out till one o'clock in the morning or whatever, at nine o'clock, I'm going to be up at the gym saying my prayers while I'm doing this and setting my day up. That's the kind of deal that you got to make because once we can honor a deal with ourselves, we can honor a deal with everything else. Until we can honor a deal with ourselves, we can't honor a deal to anybody. I'm going to tell you that. I can't honor a deal with God until I honor a deal with myself. And when I say a deal, I mean a contractual commitment. And when you do this, you make a contractual commitment with yourself, right? So that's the first and that's the first and most important thing. And you can do that in a stepped program. Uh-huh. So so what I mean by that is this is that the hardest part of getting out of bed is putting your first foot out. Once that's done, it gets like this. So you can say, in the beginning, I'm gonna do 10 minutes a day and I'm gonna take Week four, I'm going to take it to 13 minutes a day. And week six, I'm going to take it to, you can do all that. The, the, the thing is, is that you set up your deal with yourself, your contract, your commitment to yourself in a way that you can honor it. Uh -huh. If you are 400 pounds, you cannot say that I'm going to wake up Tuesday and I'm going to be 150 pounds. It's not how it goes. You can say, hey, set your, set your uh, commitment to yourself up in a way that stretches you, but is still doable. It stretches you, but it's still doable. Uh -huh. So you're setting yourself up for success. And that little bit of success breeds more success and breeds this good feeling and goes on and on and on and on. Now, I'll tell you this. Uh -huh. so, so you can do this and you can make a commitment to yourself and honor that commitment without having it picked from the right place. And by having it picked from the right place, I mean picked from a merged place. Uh -huh. You can make an agreement to honor yourself, to, to get up every day, to do your business, to do that, and force yourself into a goal that is, that is picked from your fractured self. What is the end result of this? Now, I've done this, right? I, 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 I made a chunk of money uh -huh, by, by doing this. I made the money part my goal. I was doing it from the wrong reasons. And I got to my objective. And when I got there, it was the biggest letdown of my life. Uh -huh. Now, was I glad that I got there and, 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 and got that money? Uh -huh. 
Was I glad? Yes. Why? It was part of my path. Why? Because it brought me to this understanding. I could not have gotten there uh -huh, to this understanding, which is the understanding that if I pick it from the right place, if I pick it from my wholeness, uh huh, and if I do it out of honor, integrity, wholeness, all of those things, it has a lasting and forever effect. Uh -huh. I would not have known that if I didn't get what I wanted uh -huh, and have it be the letdown. Do you see that? That's why I believe everybody should be rich once so that they understand being rich in and of itself is not the answer. But, but, but I want you to see that even though like I didn't pick that from a merge place, I wanted the money for the wrong reasons. I wanted to have a plane. I wanted to have cars. I wanted to have houses. I wanted to have all that stuff, boats, uh huh, for the wrong reasons so that I look good to other people for completely wrong reason. And then when I got it, I felt terrible. I felt suicidal. I was suicidal. Uh -huh. I would even buy cars and planes. And, and before they were delivered, I would already be sick of it. It was a, it was a terrible thing. But it gave me the awareness that, that if you pick it from the right place, that the whole thing becomes a sacred journey. Uh -huh. When it's picked from the right place, your commitment, your discipline, your, your journey, you're doing it every day. You start falling in love with the process because you're falling in love with painting, not the painting. Uh huh. So I'm falling in love with painting it, not the painting. Uh huh. And that is where the joy is. That is where the juice is. That is where the excitement is. The contentment is. Uh, that's when we start feeling like, Hey, I might actually be helping this thing. I'm a beneficial presence in this group. I'm a beneficial presence in this planet. I'm a beneficial presence in my community. I'm a beneficial presence at my table, at my company. Uh -huh. We start feeling this because we are. And something happens vibrationally when we focus on that, when we pick it from the right place, we fall in love with the process, we start honoring ourselves, doing what we say we're going to do, and, and being extremely, the fear in us is the fear of dishonoring our agreements and commitments to ourselves that all of a sudden puts us in this, this place of great responsibility and then comes great gifts. And with more gifts comes more responsibility, which is a whole nother thing I'm going to talk about in a week to come. So I want to stick with this. So we start falling in love with the process. We start doing this. We start doing this. One of the things during the process that becomes abundantly apparent to us is that our assessment of the facts on earth becomes highly important in our journey because it, it cuts down on the time. What do I mean by that? Let's say we start a business. Let's say we start a business and that we already started out and know that a 10 year overnight success is the most likely scenario that we have to work on something and hone our skills for 10 years before it starts spitting fruit. Uh huh. And when I say spitting fruit, I mean really spitting fruit. So, so, so really, really rolling and generating, uh, the, 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 the energy of, of currency and, 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 and rolling, right. Uh, that that's a 10 year thing. Now I can shave that time or I can elongate that time by my understanding and accuracy around the truth of a situation. What do I mean by that? I look at my company and I say, you know, I want to believe this person is beneficial and this person and this person, but in fact, are they? Uh huh. Is this right? My my evaluation of of the earth fact of that situation will either condense or elongate time frames for me. Uh huh. What I mean? Self analysis. I'm a good accounting person. I'm a terrible salesperson. I'm I'm a good administrator, but I'm a bad this. The accuracy of that means everything. Uh -huh. Now, who makes those decisions the best? Who makes those uh, assessments the best? The merge person. The merge person makes those assessments the best because they're not doing this out of a fractured or egoic state. They're not looking at themselves out of ego. They're looking at themselves out of the, the art of painting the thing. Uh-huh. Is my brush good? Is the paint right? Is the 
they're doing it out of a wholeness situation. So we start making, we start making what I call quality decisions, which are most closely lined up to earth fact, not, not eternal fact. Now, eternal fact is this, the person that might be harming my company might be a wonderful being in the astrals. I know that their soul is without sin. I know all this stuff, but I'm talking about the earth thing. How are they affecting me? How are they affecting the other people involved with the company? How they're, are they a beneficial presence to the group? Those are the hard, real earth things that as a merged person, we can make good decisions and we might be able to trim the 10 years down to six. And if we're not good at it, we might be able to make the 10 years, 15 years. Uh huh. So it's really, really, really important. And as we get clear on what is really going on around us. To, to really be honest, I meet a lot of people. I meet a lot of people. I had a lot of people who worked here. Uh huh. And some of them are very, very, very connected to, to what goes on in the earth. And those people don't seem to struggle with, uh, I don't know, with, with making ends meet and, and having enough to eat and da, da da da. They seem to be solid in that because they're factual about what's going on around them. Uh huh. I want you to be factual around it. And, and in addition to being factual, I really want you to be whole around it. So th those decisions are the best in this, in this pursuit of truth, right? So, so it starts out, it starts out in our business life or our, our financial life and our financial life is, is geared to our trade or our vocation. Uh -huh. And that's one thing. But as we expand into the truth, we start to bring it into other aspects of our life, right? And that's when this whole symphony occurs, right? That, that it's in our family, it's in our friends, it's in our relationships, it's in our, our, our friendships, it's in our business, our business guy to business guy, business woman to business woman relationships, business person to business person. It's all over. It starts to, the truth starts to flood at us and from that point of truth, we end up getting uh, traction in all these different areas. That's super, super important, which leads to the next point. Uh -huh. False knowledge is far more detrimental. And I mean, I cannot explain to you how much more detrimental false knowledge is than no knowledge at all. I can't explain it to you. I can't. But it's, it's, it's the, like the single biggest hurdle to you getting the things that you want to your engineering coming off, meaning that your engineered plan comes into place is the belief in something that's untrue. It is the, it is the, the killer. It is the killer and you have to be hyper vigilant about it. So, so what does that even mean? So let's take a look at me when it comes to finance, I'm okay at it. I don't claim to know a lot about it. And I've been in it since I've been, I've been paying my own bills since I've been 16, right? And I've run companies since I was 18. And so that's, I'm 58. Is that 40 years of this stuff, right? So I should be okay at it. I'm okay at it, but I am no expert at it. And I know that I'm not an expert. So by not forming an opinion around how, how let's say governments handle their financing, I have a, I have a general opinion but I don't have exact opinions. I don't know enough about foreign policy. I don't know enough about where the money should be spent. I don't even know enough about what happens in hyperinflation. I have ideas, but I don't have enough to have an opinion. So you know what I do? I don't have an opinion in that. Uh -huh. I have feelings towards it, but I don't have an opinion because I could be changed instantly. What I do have an opinion about is very few things that do I have a knowledge base that's, that's extensive enough to form an opinion that I build my church on. Uh -huh. And that really has to do with uh, what I've learned from my human interactions as they regard to, as they relate to business, I have an opinion on, and I'm pretty darn good at it. It's an opinion that was fought hard. So what I'm gonna say to you is when you take things for granted that other people say, it's generally uh, a high risk situation. If you take it for granted and believe fully in it, and adopt that as your knowledge. It's one of the biggest mistakes in business that could ever be made. One of the biggest mistakes in business. Uh -huh. So what we wanna do is we really want to learn what we learn and we really want to know what we know. 
if you show me someone who's who knows a little bit about a great a great amount of things i'm going to tell you someone whose opinion i won't even pay attention to uh, on a cursory level because because it's not deep enough the 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 devil in all of these things is in the detail the the things that you should know about is you should know yourself you should know how you get from point a to point b the best the best uh-huh and that usually goes back to the two things we started talking about consistency and discipline uh-huh you give me someone who's consistent meaning they 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 do the same thing all the time and they honor their agreements to themselves first that person is a good bet that person will make a lot of bad decisions a lot of bad choices and they will still get to where they want to go uh -huh. they will still have a fruitful life uh-huh so i'm going to tell you something about the medicine when when i see people uh so if you look at the inverse of these numbers if you look there's four people out of 100 who don't get it the first time when they're here i, I want to tell you something that i've seen in the medicine the medicine tends to tell the truth to uh the 95.71 percent why is that uh-huh i'm going to tell you my opinion on this and this is just an opinion those people have been in the process of of being manifesting based people their whole life or or recently learned it or had some past of being able to manifest the four percent that doesn't get it probably have have been struggling with the ability to manifest why because when the mother tells you your potential she's telling you everything your highest potential what you have the ability of doing and more uh-huh in other words she tells you below your ability because we're all operating the best of us are operating at about six percent of our mental capacity the best of us right so she's telling you that you can get this for some people it seems too big it seems too big uh-huh why because they've been unable to hold the agreements with themselves previously in life what 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 when i see a success somebody who hasn't been able to maintain agreements does the medicine and is able to maintain those agreements those people always get what the mother told them they could get always uh-huh so the, the 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 core of the core that i'm trying to get to here is that your agreement with yourself is the single most important thing that you can do in order to engineer the life that you want uh-huh your agreement with yourself and i want to tell you something i can tell you why why that because there's going to be days where the kids are late for school uh-huh there's going to be days that the refrigerator breaks there's going to be days that checks bounce there's going to be days that you get bad news about a loved one there's going to be days that your dog is sick there's going to be days that someone in your family passes there's going to be days that 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 you just don't feel good there's going to be days when you're sick uh-huh and the thing that has to become more important than all of those is your agreement to yourself because really it's your agreement between yourself and your soul uh-huh that is what becomes the most important and when you have a person who keeps that agreement with themselves in the first and highest priority they honor everyone else in their lives they're a person you can bet on uh-huh uh, i tell you there was a uh a, a, a post the other day that said i i i forget how it was exactly worded but it says uh you know uh, the you you win a million dollars by saying name one person who's going to be late to the meeting you're about to call uh-huh that person probably doesn't honor the agreements with themselves too good right so what we want to do is we want to first establish the agreement with ourselves and then ride herd over it and by ride herd over it i mean honor that at all costs feeling sick feeling tired feeling this feeling that honor that agreement and when we honor that agreement we honor everyone and everything else around us and that's when we can build because we're all going to have bad days we're all going to have days where the check bounces we're all going to have days where we don't get paid by someone we're all going to have days where we don't feel like it or we're in a bad mood or we get some bad news or somebody we love gets sick we're all going to have those days now i want to be the person that everybody depends on regardless of of what's going on and i do because that's a reflection of me being able to depend on me
That's it. Uh huh. So I want you to have a beautiful, wonderful, sacred week. Have a blessed week. Enjoy the process, but pay attention to these things. Honor your agreement with yourself. Put yourself first so that you can put everybody else first. Cheers. Have a great week. Talk to you next week.